Welcome to Warehouse Automation Matters. I'm your host, Mary Hart, and I'm here with Ken Ray, WMS Systems Engineer at Cooper Lighting Solutions to discuss complex cartonization. Welcome, Ken. Good morning. Good morning to you. So first, before we get into the topic of cartonization, since this is going live at the end of November or so, it's the holiday season. What's it like being Ken Kringle? How did you start being a licensed Santa Claus? Well, <laughs> I uh, during the uh, COVID, I'm a uh, uh, my my goal in retirement is to start a chestnut farm. So in 2018, I started a chestnut farm. And during COVID, my wife and I said, hey, what if we looked like Mr. and Ms. Claus to sell the chestnuts? So I let my beard grow out. And uh, it wasn't completely uh, white, you know, as the snow and, and all. And uh, so I was going around as Ken Kringle, Santa's brother. You know, he gets into too much eggnog and, oh, uh, well, I deliver the toys. He gets all the credit. And that was kind of my little shtick. Uh, well, in about 2020, you know, uh, or, or 2021, uh, when everything started kind of coming back into uh, vogue, everybody in our uh, my family just wasn't didn't seem to be in the Christmas spirit. So I had all these sport coats that were made out of wrapping paper and stuff like that, and I would go around and just trying to cheer everybody up, wear them at work, and that was my way to get into the Christmas spirit. Well, I had to stop by Walmart. Uh, to pick up some stuff for my, my wife on the way home one day. And there were uh, like four couples, eight, eight people in their late 60s, early 70s, looked to be retired. And it looked like one of their daughters in their early 30s had a special needs child around three or four years old in the back of her stroller with a Little Mermaid's umbrella. And as I walked by as Ken Kringle, she saw me as Santa Claus. And so I knelt down there and had my first kind of interaction, if you will, as Santa Claus. Next thing I know, all these people in the Walmart grocery section had cell phones out, and we drew quite a crowd. And uh, I'd done singing telegrams and stuff like that before, so I knew how to make my exit and all that. And uh, so when I talked to her and told her goodbye and that I loved her and all that and walked off, something grabbed my heart and the next year i went to santa claus school and now have my uh, master's from the northern light santa academy and i'm now a professional santa claus and I, I feel like i didn't seek it out it called me i love that that's the perfect way to be introduced into the world of santa claus and being a santa claus thank you so much for sharing that and I appreciate that you have the time to actually talk to me today, considering that it's the start of the holiday season and also always a busy season in the warehouse world. We're going to do a little bit of a shift in terms from talking about holiday cheer into complex cartonization. For our listeners who might not be familiar, could you give me a quick overview of what cartonization means in the warehouse context and how it can become complex? Uh, well, First off, cartonization is taking a look at whatever a customer ordered and the size of those particular parts and, and how to ship it in the smallest carton that will get it there undamaged. Uh, the uh, previous warehouse management system that, that we were using before we started going to complex cartonization did something called fluid cartonization. Now, as we all know in warehousing and, and we're in the lighting industry, lights aren't liquid. And so you can't just pour it into a box like you could pour a glass of tea into a glass. Uh, so fluid cartonization was only accurate around 64 to 60 per, uh, six percent of the time. And so we still had to to, to rebox things and recartonize it at the pack station. It was just a, a mess to the point where it wasn't uh, really beneficial to us. Uh, and so in 2020, we did a, a, an upgrade on our WMS and introduce Locust Robotics into our uh, warehouse. And, uh, and the WMS assistant that we had had something called complex cartonization. And what that did, it took the footprint data of your part, length, width, height, and it did five modeling algorithms as how to select the most efficient carton to pack into. And it does this on the front end when you allocate a, a shipment. And then it picks the best of those five algorithms and creates a, a carton size that that product is going to be picked into. So what made PackSize the right partner for this project? Were there features or capabilities in their technology that really stood out to you compared to other options? 
Well, when we uh, started this project, we had already uh, engaged with pack size, and I wasn't necessarily uh, in, involved in that decision. We had a packaging engineer that, uh, you know, with, we're, we're in the lighting industry, so sometimes, you know, the bulbs and the ballast and the uh, the covers for, for that can be somewhat fragile. Uh, and, you know, we always want to make sure our product gets to the customer undamaged. And so we have a full-time packaging engineer, and they're the ones that kind of made that uh, decision. Uh, but I've also looked at some of the big box office supply stores, and they were using that same technology. And it's done everything uh, and, and, and has been everything we wanted it to be. Great. And we went straight into talking about Ken Kringle, and I realized I didn't even give you a chance to talk about what you do at Cooper Lighting Solutions as the WMS systems engineer. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Well, I'm, I'm responsible for making sure the uh, warehouse management system, what controls the movement of product in the facility is up and operational, doing what it's supposed to do, and that all the RFs uh, work. I do continuous improvement projects. I'm a Six Sigma black belt. Uh, and and so uh, also introduce uh, technology. For, for instance, we have drones, automated floor scrubbers, locust robotics, or looking at uh, other automation uh, solutions for the facility. And, and so I play an integral part in getting those rolled out. One of the exciting things about complex cartonization is the data-driven aspect of it. How did data play a role in determining the optimal box sizes and configurations, and what insights have you discovered along the way? Okay, data, as you touched on, when it comes to complex cartonization, data is the linchpin because we all have heard the term garbage in, garbage out. And so if you have a part that says it's 20 inches by 20 inches by 20 inches, in reality it's 10 by 10 by 10, you, it's, it's pretty obvious that cartonization does not work. Uh, that had been a challenge for us uh, because our ERP is, is SAP and, a, and it's a global setting for everybody. And a lot of people have access to get in and, and work on footprints. Uh, our engineers create new products. We do about 20,000 patents every year. And we're always creating all these new parts. And so sometimes engineers, they don't worry about distribution and transportation and those type things. Hey, the system took one inch by one inch by one inch and it didn't stop me, so I did it. Uh, and so that that creates uh, problems. And so we uh, hired a uh, an individual that worked with our packaging engineer and every new part had to go through a rigorous process to make sure that the footprint data was was accurate. And, and so uh, that has been very important. Now, we've had some recessions and, and things like that, and, and this person took another position and we didn't necessarily backfill it, thinking, well, hey, we could save all this. And then things started going off the rail because we went backwards, if you will, and finally senior management realized we need to have a process in place for this. And so we've gone back to checking all the product when it first comes in the door, making sure the footprint data is right, and we're getting back on track now. So the data in cartonization is key. So how did the introduction of this cartonization system impact your overall efficiency at Cooper Lighting Solutions? Are there any key metrics or success stories you'd like to highlight? Well, the, the one thing that I, I, I will tell you, most of our key metrics as, as this process unfolds is during, during the time that we implemented this, we implemented a new WMS system. We implemented a Locust Robotics. We were integrating with our pack size machine to a certain degree. And so it was what, what I call this kind of like perfect storm. And so we actually involved that uh, as part of a uh, major overreaching project, if you will. And prior to going to complex cartonization, we would just pick multiple uh, shipments on a cart. Uh, when it would get to the pack station, they would then have to sort through that cart, see what went with what order. Then they'd have to go find the proper size box. Sometimes if they didn't have a custom-made box, they'd have a, a, a stock-type box that it would fit in. They'd have to go over to the pack size machine, and then they'd get to talking. And the next thing you know, it was just highly inefficient. And we were touching the product at the time it was picked, the person checking the cart, the person doing the packing, the person recartonizing it. It was so many touch points. We actually took a look at our process. We had around 32 steps, 28 
which were non-value added steps. So the complex cartonization allowed us to make the carton that the customer is going to actually receive the product in. We were able to make that on the front end of our process. We implemented this in conjunction with Locus Robotics. Locus has a methodology where you pick into a tote or a tote array that comes up and then you take stuff out of the totes. But we took the totes off and we actually put the carton that the order is going to ship into on the robot. And so the picker, as the robot gets out to the pick locations, actually puts the product into the shipping carton so that when the robot gets up to the pack station, the packer just takes the finished carton, looks over inside, makes sure what's supposed to be there is there, puts some dunnage in there if needed, seals it up, applies shipping labels, and without ever retouching the product, this complex cartonization has allowed us to eliminate all of these touch points. Packaging waste is a hot topic right now. How has the cartonization solution helped reduce waste at Cooper Lighting? Were there any sustainability goals you had in mind when implementing the system? Well, uh, Cooper Lighting Solutions' parent company is, is Signify, and Signify has a goal uh, of being uh, carbon neutral, and uh, so that, that does play a, a key role. But we don't use bubble wrap uh, anymore because that is non-biodegradable, uh, you know, petroleum-based product. Uh, we actually use the the, uh, car, the paper that you kind of crinkle up. Uh, for instance, when I get packages, uh, having a chestnut farm and, and eating compost, I compost that paper when I when I receive it. Uh, and so by doing that, even if it is either uh, composted by the end user, winds up in a landfill, at least that that, that paper will biodegrade uh, and is less impactful on the uh, environment. And the second thing is by having not always using stock boxes and getting the, the one that fits the best and then fill in the void, well, the complex cartonization allows us to build a carton that's much closer to the dimensions of all the product that goes in it. And so we actually use less dunnage, uh, less going to the landfill, less shipping costs, more can go on a truck, so less fuel costs. So all of this has played a role in sustainability. So we've talked about sustainability, we've talked about efficiency. What about your customer's experience? How has the improved complex cartonization affected your customers or has that affected your customers at all? Have you noticed any changes in feedback or return rates? Well, you know, we always do our voice of the customer surveys and things of that nature. On-time delivery is, is always a big thing for us. So by having fewer touch points, one of the things that happens is we can get stuff out of the door faster. So our turn time on our, our shipments has improved. The other thing is, you know, when product is rattling around in transportation inside a box, it's more apt to be damaged. Uh, and so by using the complex cartonization and having less room for the product to, to wiggle around, if you will, during transportation, uh, it's reduced damages. And obviously, as the end customer, uh, when something gets to you on time and undamaged, well, you're happier. That is very true. And especially when you don't want anything broken, especially in a lighting solution, you don't want any lights or glass or anything like that broken in the process. Nothing not like getting a light that's broken. <laughs> no, that would be just not ideal in the slightest. Where does automation fit into your cartonization process and how crucial is it to your overall warehouse strategy? Well, I've kind of touched on that a little bit and the automation from the beginning of the process, uh, when we get the order, we uh, do all our cartonization in our our WMS system. So, you know, their technology comes into play there. Uh, we send the orders out and Locus actually, uh, when we get down to a certain level, will trigger the, the printing of labels of the pack size machine. We go over and we have all our card sizes loaded in there. The user simply goes to a touch screen, says what kind of carton I want, and pack size builds a carton right there in front of you. We then take that cart and put it on a robot, which then goes out and picks. And then when it comes up, we have, you know, all the RF scanning and the, the checking at the uh, at the pack table uh, to finish processing the order. It interfaces with UPS or FedEx or whoever the carrier happens to be. And we get those labels. So automation is, you may or may not see it and, and we're becoming so accustomed to it, you may not even notice it. But when you think about every step in the process, there's some type of technology or some type of automation that's touching that process.
Absolutely true. And we've talked about the benefits that you've seen from the cartonization, complex cartonization system. Were there any benefits that you didn't expect that you received? When we take a look at our metrics, mostly, uh, like I said, we did this as, as we implemented uh, Locus Robotics. So we were really focused on our metrics on what it did to our, our picking and how fast we picked each individual line. And so that's where most of our grading metrics, if you will, come into play. But I think the, the biggest gain, and it doesn't necessarily show up on paper, is picking directly into the carton that goes to the customer and eliminating all the touch points when you pack to a tote or to a, a cart and have to retouch it. Eliminating all that non-value-added touch point points in, the, in our previous process, I think that's where the biggest benefit has been not easily seen on paper. We know that warehouse automation, wow, I just can't say that, warehouse automation and smart packaging are trends right now. How do you see packaging, cartonization, and WMS systems evolving over the next few years? And what role do you think it'll play at Cooper Lighting? I believe that robotics, automation, whether it be cartonization, there are so many things on the horizon. And I go to some of the trade shows and you wouldn't believe what's out there. And, and when we first started implementing this process, hey, we're going to put robots in the warehouse. We're going to use a pack size machine to make all the cartons on the front end. The executives laughed. They audibly laughed in the conference room when presented. What? It's in a warehouse? Else, not, aren't you supposed to be pallet jacks, fork trucks, it's just loading brown boxes. It was the thing was, it's just brown boxes on a truck. And so, uh, you know, people that aren't intimately in the distribution field, they just, the warehouse is this empty box full of brown boxes that just go on a truck and they don't, uh, you know, really think about it. Uh, but as we strive for efficiency, there's a, a lot of money that goes into warehousing and shipping and touching the product and you have to pay the the associates of the facility and you know all that and, and so there's a lot of money that goes into getting the product from the facility out to the end user or the con, uh, consumer and so i think automation streamlining that and then you know that a to z companies you know getting everything out in one day or two days or sometimes in metropolitan areas on the same day is really set the standard that people are starting to get used to it. You know, we're used to send a stamp and a letter and it would get there next week. And now we send an email and it's there in 10 seconds or faster. Uh, and so it's a, a want it now kind of society, if you will. And so without automation, you're not going to really satisfy a lot of your customers. And the companies that do jump on the automation bandwagon are going to be the ones that are here in the future. So for businesses that are considering complex cartonization solutions, but they might be hesitant about it, what advice would you offer? I'm going to steal a, a, a phrase from a shoe company. Just do it. There's really no reason not to do it unless you don't really have the, the scale to do it in, in a, a small operation that you, that you can't cut these things and you don't have a lot of red. But, but if you're in a, a 200,000, 300,000, 400,000 square foot in a facility, you, you need to explore auto, uh, automation. I love that. Thank you. So let's go back to Ken Kringle for a second. What are some events that you have coming up for as Ken Kringle? Oh, when I do Ken Kringle, I, I consider myself to be a cross between Edmund Gwynn on the Miracle on 34th Street meets Professor Marvel from Wizard of Oz. Mm -hmm. And so this is who I become as Ken Kringle. We'll, we'll flip over for just a moment. And I've actually st already started. I'm the uh, official Santa Claus for the Cotton Fair, which is a fall festival show that the, we have here. It has a lot of 1800-era uh, buildings all on seven acres. And, you know, I've been around since the 1700s. So these old buildings really attract me. And this month, we're mostly working with photographers, people getting photographs so they can do their Christmas postcards and things of that nature. And then once I kind of get in December, it's, you know, corporate parties. And I do a lot of in-home stuff because I do magic and puppetry and storytelling and I have all these magical props. And so it's, I'm waiting for a good cool front, though. Here in Massachusetts, it's 80, close to 80 degrees today. That's not at all Ken Kringle type weather. <laughs> 80 degrees in polar bear fur, not a good combination. Well, thank you, Ken Kringle and Ken Ray, and Merry Christmas to you. And thank you for being on the Warehouse Automation Matters podcast. I appreciate it. It was absolutely my pleasure. Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. And thank you again to our listeners. We're here to help you move what matters in your warehouse. Mm -hmm.